Globally, the agriculture sector is accountable for a significant 26% of global greenhouse gases. This has given farming and food production the stereotype of being one of the worst polluters and there's a growing friction between farmers and environmentalists. British farmers are committed to play their part in meeting the UK's net zero emissions target and last September, the National Farming Union released their aims to achieve net zero emissions by 2040. Even though British farmers still have to reduce their emissions, there's more to this story. My name is Adam, I'm a wildlife biologist and the founder of Talks Wild. This is the environmental side of the agricultural story. I'm Mark, um, welcome to Staple Farm. Um, I'm a member of the NFU Environment Forum. So who are the NFU? Well, the NFU uh, represents people like myself, farmers. It represents about 55,000 farmers throughout England and Wales. And uh, we sort of work with a team of experts who advise us on numerous issues. Um, at the moment, of course, particularly, they um, give us very good advice on climate change, uh, the direction we, we need to go. And we work together very much as a team. Uh, we use the experts, and I suppose you'd call it uh, people like myself who are the grounded people who try and put what they might suggest into practice. From an environmental perspective, do you think that the reputation of British farming has changed over the last few years? Certainly in the last five to ten years, our image has by and large has improved. If you read certain newspapers, you probably wouldn't get that impression. You'd think we're destroying the environment and destroying everything but I'm heavily involved in uh, promoting our industry with school visits. And what we try and do is we show them how we work with a commercial farm producing food, sustainable food, alongside working with the environment. And it's very much a balance of the two, really. So why has the NFU made the commitment to reach net zero by 2040? We want to drive this agenda. We want to own it. Um, as um, British farmers, we want to be the best at climate, I suppose you call it climate friendly farming. So to achieve net zero, there's got to be a lot of challenges along the way. What do you think they are and how do you think the NFU will overcome this? We're, we've got, what, 55,000 farmers. We've got to get the message across to all of them that getting to net zero is good for their businesses. So we've got to be profitable, productive, and we've got to improve what we produce. We want to work with nature and the environment so what we're looking at doing is things to store carbon. We're looking at where appropriate grass margins, uh, grass farms, and then in a, the right sort of areas, we're looking at uh, small bits of areas that aren't suitable for farming, they plant some trees. Globally, we have a problem of waste um, in terms of overproduction. We just need to make sure that we are not wasting resources. Um, that's what sustainability looks like in my mind. Do you think the British public have disconnected themselves with where their food comes from? People like the NFU do a great job in encouraging us as farmers to connect with our with the members of the public. Um, you know, you have things like Open Farm Sunday and, and events like that which, which encourage people to come on farm to, to see this, this kind of setup and to just understand the work that goes into it. What can we as consumers do to become more sort of conscious of, of where our food comes from, what we do, where we get it from? I think if you have the opportunity to buy local direct from farms it's really important. Um, that will bridge the gap between the consumer and the farmer. If you've got any questions, you can ask them how it's been produced. Um, also buying seasonally, just checking all the labels on the food that you buy in supermarkets, just to ensure that you're responsibly sourcing the food that is on your plates. Do you think that farming has a positive and optimistic sort of part to play in climate change and, and sort of going on into the future? I feel like mine and Emily's generation, we want to be more efficient because we know that like my parents and, and their parents have potentially not been in the past. But that's also because they haven't needed to have the output that we are required to. With growing populations, we need to, we need to produce more and more out of less and less. So there is a huge amount of responsibility for 
uh, us as farmers to take that onto our shoulders. And yeah, so I think we have to be a part of that. So there's one thing we must address, meat. People still want to eat meat, so how it's produced is critical. Do sustainable meat options exist? And can meat be considered sustainable? I'm Henry Andrews. I'm a beef farmer uh, down on the Devon Cornwall border, uh, committed to delivering a future for my children. And I believe part of that is to, uh, to pass on an environment which is an improvement on what I founded. So what is your mission at Carbon Neutral Beef? So we're, we're carbon neutral and I think also we could with this work be a carbon negative company. So we're a closed suckler herd. Uh, we produce uh, calves, we grow the calves on a pasture-based system, so we don't buy in, 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 in uh, any soil whatsoever. Uh, we try and feed them exclusively on pasture-based, so um, on grasses, herbs, legumes. Do you think farming plays an optimistic part in the solution towards climate change? When you look around um, <laughs> us in the West Country or other parts of the UK, we are mainly green fields. And, and I, I, think, I think that uh, livestock farming um, either in a rotational system with, with, with crops or just a livestock farming on its own can be a major s s solution to climate change. It just has to be done right. So I'm Martin and I set up Shrinkford Organics 20 years ago. I guess we have three main aims really. One is we uh, produce really healthy food to supply to our local community and at the same time we try to regenerate the ecosystems within the farm and finally really importantly we have to be profitable so we can reinvest to keep the business going well. What sort of practices do you put in place that make Shillingford a sustainable farm? So we're organic, we've been organic for 20 years and essentially that is with conventional farming you use artificial fertilisers and in a way the soil is a medium for which the nutrients are put on artificially. But as an organic farmer or agroecological farmer, so we have to use natural systems to get the fertility. And the way we do that mainly on this farm is by growing green manures, we call them. You know, above ground we have sort of wildlife corridors and patches for wildlife. We leave our hedges to grow up. Uh, we leave uh, beetle banks margins next to the hedges. Then of course we've got the agroforestry system which is alleys of trees with undisturbed land in between. Often um, tusky, tusky grasses in between and that's really good for harbouring lots of insects. When we first went organic our crops weren't that good for the first two or three years but now we've been doing it for 20 years. We very rarely get crop, crop failures and the crops do really well. They sort of outcompete the weeds and on the whole they're really healthy. So I just think our soil fertility is built up, our soil organic matter is built up. What do you think needs to change um, to connect British people with their food and, and drink products, really? I think becoming, yeah, it's about awareness. So what, I can go into local supermarket in September and buy apples from New Zealand. When we've got apples here producing, and you think, why, why are you buying them from New Zealand when it's just the start of the, you know, the apple season in this country and it's just a lack of understanding about seasonality and what's available locally and what could be available locally. We need to have this local food infrastructure in place because the local food infrastructure has just disappeared over the last 40 years. So it's a really critical element. We it won't really happen unless we have councils on our side supporting us to do it. And people are asking, making the connection between food the environment because really food is our interface between human humanity and the environment and it's about health community society and yet we seem to have sort of de totally separated it from who we are as people we can't fight climate change without our farmers we need to move beyond the polluting stereotype and work with our farmers for a more sustainable future. So let's support local and make sure our food is for the future. <laughs>